my hair looks stupid. I think my hair looks stupid. I'm self conscious about my hair. I'm like, see, dead, dead head, bed head, bed head. Bed hey head guys, head. welcome to the video. Um, we're. <laughs> I'm sorry, I look stupid. I look like an idiot. You all we, all look look like, we all look like idiots. But like Liam, especially. He always looks stupid. <laughs> so, we're going to just talk about um, our experience at St. John's College as freshmen, I guess. Yeah. And I've asked people to ask us some questions. So, how much Greek should we know beforehand to get a good start for the Iliad? No, no, no Greek. If you come into St. John's College knowing Greek, no one will like you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, can confirm. Uh, yeah. I mean, it certainly helps to have experience in other languages that have, uh, in particular, stress the inflection, but taking any language beforehand is useful. It doesn't have to be Greek. You don't need to actually know Greek to read the Iliad because it's translated for you, and you'll get to have a lot of arguments about which translation you should use. So. Fitzgerald. Fitz Lombardo. Fitzgerald is the best. Fitzgerald, yeah. It's just a fact. Oh, wow. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. uh <laughs> So the next question. I was curious about campus life and what the social aspects of St. John's were beyond the program. Okay, so, well, you'd expect that it's not a party school but there's a lot of partying on the weekends. And if you're not into drugs and alcohol and smoking, then you'll have a hard time finding friends at first. That's just an objective fact. But people are pretty open and welcoming here. Like they won't judge you for what you believe in or what you don't want to do. So eventually, if you open up to them and show them who you really are, you'll, you'll be able to find friends. It sounds cheesy, but everybody's, it's like a giant community here. Everybody kind of knows each other, except for the room Johnnies, but we don't talk about them. Yeah. All right. The the people who, who just stay in their room and read all the time. From Johnny. From Johnny. Uh, from Johnny. They're quite despicable. No one no one knows who this guy is. Like whenever I bring up like yeah my roommate Liam they're like who? That's objectively not true. I'm, who who's like, Liam? And then I'm like the guy who wears the ugly waffle house. Hat. <laughs> they're like oh that guy I know who you're talking about. Yeah he makes me uncomfortable. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to be active if you don't want to. You don't have to go to parties in order to feel as though you want to fit in. You don't have to drink or, or do drugs. And if you want to, all the power to you. It'll be very easy. Uh, be very little pride in that endeavor. But there's a lot of smokers, disproportionate number of smokers. Yeah. Getting cancer from secondhand smoke is probably higher risk on this campus than in other campuses across the country. Uh, so fair warning for that. The intramurals are incredibly fun. I've only ever watched them. Because <laughs> you're a room Johnny. Because yeah. you're a room Johnny. And there's a lot of unconventional sports. You like croquet? You got it. We've got croquet. We've got crew. We've got sailing. We've got fencing. We have experimental philosophy. Oh my god. Anything else about the social scene? Yeah. People fight here, but it's never going to be over an argument. It's going to be over, like, uh, what's something people fight over? Well, let's not talk about Campbell, too. Yeah, we're not going to talk about Campbell, Yeah, too. where you live is... Don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like turf wars. It's basically like an Ivy League college, minus all of the pressure that's put on you. There's not like a lot of competition amongst people to be the best. Yeah, that's it's, true. Yeah, it's just with yourself. Yeah, which some some people crack at actually a lot more under that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like the key to the absolute existential crisis kind of reading material. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that really freaks people a lot. A lot of people are forced to confront themselves very quickly in a new social environment. Although it's ironic because some people just read the material and then don't confront themselves. <laughs> but, but the book actually says something very poignant about having a personal life. So. You might be frustrated by uh, people who say one thing in class and then once they leave class, they, you know, they, they relapse back to, to, to their old selves. Hmm. But I think that that might be a case of a loud minority of people 
Um, and there are many here who take away a lot from the text and uh, become better people of it. I mean, we've been reading Greek text, so I, uh, virtue is, is stuck in my head on, on, you know, repeat, 10 hours on repeat. Um, <laughs> how to be virtuous. How to be virtuous. How to be virtuous. Can, can you learn how to be virtuous? I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> really painful. It? It's very rewarding when you find a group of people with, similar values and similar aspirations to become better mm. uh, in applying the text to their lives. Next question. <laughs> what surprised you the most when you came to St. John's College? How many smokers there were. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. true. Everyone has something to say, but it's, it's maybe just that they're not always the best at saying it. And I think part of the St. John's education is encouraging people to say things well that was very surprising to me that you could learn the skill of drawing something interesting out of everyone. One thing that really surprised me was that people didn't seem to care very much about the material outside mm. of class. Like they weren't discussing it. Like they just start talking about like drugs or whatever. But like mm. now it seems like it's kind of fusing and hopefully it keeps going in that direction. I I was surprised with how much of um, a pain in the butt, the administration. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> could be. Uh, I personally would not make my decision to go here uh, around how painful it is to negotiate and navigate the uh, labyrinthian bureaucracy that is down there at Mellon Hall. Yeah, just be, be, be wary. <laughs> I will say I like the dining hall. You like the dining hall? Yeah, I like the dining hall. Which you will you will find here as well as a vegan bar, as well as a dessert bar. And every now and then, um, chicken and waffles. So if you're used to what <laughs> I'm used to, it's redeeming. Uh, I guess dining hall is okay. The desserts are good. Yeah, the desserts yeah. are very good. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, you don't have to agree with people, and um, you can still be friends. I hope. <laughs> no, we're going to have friends yeah, no, after we're, we're, this video. Yeah. That would be funny if that... Yeah, that would be really funny. Yeah, you like will see him in the next video, you know, guys. You know, no, yeah, I think that's a really yeah. interesting thing, though, that um, disagreements become less substantial here at St. John's and instead just kind of interesting. They're, they're not so shocking as, like, wow, we actually, like, fundamentally disagree on something very, very basic, and that, that, that can be frustrating, but then it immediately becomes, I think, very intriguing, at least for me and my experiences, because it's, it's not hard to have a very deep conversation with a fairly common St. John student. So I think that's something that's really nice about St. John's. I have a complaint. Go, have a complaint. Go ahead. I'm more of a country boy. Mm -hmm. um, I like having access to nature. I chose the Annapolis campus over Santa Fe knowing that there was, I guess, more opportunity for outdoors activities at the Santa Fe campus. I chose Annapolis because I felt as though there wouldn't be anything to do uh, except for, I guess, lock myself in the room and do homework. <laughs> um, there is a, a pretty dramatic shift. Annapolis is by no means a city, it's more so a town. It, it's, a, it's a stark contrast between the urban and the rural environment. Santa Fe is much more rural. Annapolis much more urban, which is a, a pro or a con, depending on, I guess, what you're looking for. Question? Um, oh, what are some of the struggles you had when you first came to St. John? Chapter 5 in Greek. <laughs> I still haven't memorized the, the verb paradigm, so. <laughs> Or the declensions of the nouns? Uh. Oh, assistants. They have assistants. Oh, yeah, use your assistants. They're lifesavers. But be aware that the Greek assistants, they aren't perfect, so... They're human. They're not like robots, unfortunately. I've never used the assistants, and it's probably to my detriment. You are a room Johnny. Yeah. I'm not a room Johnny. You are. He's a room Johnny. I'm not a room Johnny, but... Where, where, do you, where, where do you write your essays? Library. In the coffee shop, in the library, I mean, I in the fishbowl. Like um, There's people in the coffee shop. I, I would get distracted. Um, 
there uh, the library's big the lounge of uh, like any floor of specter actually is pretty quiet um and there are couches i like to write on the couch i can't write in a chair use the library do you uh, use the library for like studying no one ever goes there there's many comfortable seats most people don't go there <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah I go there. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, why, that's why it's, not that's most why it's great. Well, yeah, well when I'm on the second and third floor, there's this couch that's next to... I always like want to sit at that couch, but people take it all the time. That's because I, I always take it, which would be my recommendation. Take couches. Yeah, take it. Find a study spot. Yeah, that's true. Also, the third floor of McDowell. Every room there mm. is nice to study in. I, well, that's only if you don't hate... Johnny chairs, they're okay. That's true. Johnny chairs, Johnny chairs. are Johnny terrible. Chairs. Every <laughs> chair here one. is the same. And yep. they're not like the worst chair you've ever sat in, but you sit in it and you're like, yeah, I don't, I'm done. I don't like this chair. I'm not. <laughs> then you sit in it for two hours. Yeah, right. They're terrible chairs. <laughs> yeah, it's weird though, because like they're bad enough that I want them to be different, but not so bad that I don't sit in them. The school spends like four hundred dollars on these chairs. Each chair. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, like each, each chair. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm a good chair. Yeah, I think it's important to know. Every class is like a gamble, so you you don't know because the the quality of the tutors, it it varies. It's insane. Uh, the like, the quality of the students you're gonna get paired with, um, and you you get a a, a group of students who stays with you through every class. It's oh, called yeah. a core. Um, like three to. Five other students mm. uh, who you share every class with you better hope you like those guys because you're stuck with them for the whole year yeah the other funny thing about st john's is if um if there's no one in your class who talks too much you're the one who talks too much um because there's always someone who's yeah. just like going off and they don't actually <laughs> know anything but they keep talking and it's really annoying and they pretend like they know things. Every now and then, they'll have a really large vocabulary, so you actually learn a few words, <laughs> which is fun, but it, it's still mostly a waste of time. Because, about. Yeah, you know, me too. Wait, is it? Yeah, it has to be. Uh, I see. Um, cool. But, I don't know, there are plenty of students who just keep talking, and they, they come in all shapes and forms. There's the ones that use really big words. They're the ones who have some kind of, like, religious vendetta. And they're trying to spread their religion. Um, that's kind of weird. Oh, there's also the one who never does the homework, but talks. Always. Yeah. Always. Ugh. Why is Rose and Sylvie not saying anything? Because you just cover it well. The patriarchy. Yes. Patriarchy. Oh, I'm sitting right here for that. Fight the patriarchy. Fight the Fight. Ugh, can't get my legs comfortable. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Something I struggle with when I got here is if you're a quiet person, you're going to have a hard time because there's a lot of boisterous people in class and oh. they're just going to take over. But, and, yeah. But they know nothing. Also, yeah. it's a good trait to learn how to listen, I guess. Coming in with seminar, if you are someone who has trouble, uh, you're, you're not comfortable, like, getting a foot in the door for conversations, you're a bit more bashful, uh, and you, you, know, you don't want to have to interrupt someone to get your point in. Um, I'm not going to say don't come, because I think the program does a very good job of training people out of that if they're very serious about it. Just as a pro tip, try and team up with someone else mm. in your class or your core so you can kind of call on each other. You can kind of, it's like, you know, and I was wondering what Miss John was thinking. I was wondering what Mr. Pillsbury was thinking. Buddy up. You know, you, your friends are your resources. Oh yeah, use your core. Use your core and talk about it before a seminar and classes. That yeah. Helps. Yeah, actually, if you are someone who is a little more confident, it's, it's really valuable if you um, are the kind of person who will make space after you speak and like make eye contact with the quieter people because even just looking people in the eye and like nodding at them like I know you want to say something can really mean a lot and I will also say if you are a quieter person but you learn your voice here I think that's maybe even a better thing than if you're um, talkative already because I, I believe a lot of very talkative people here have a false confidence and they're speaking not from a place of heart but from a place of 
just trying to look fancy or flashy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, I've fallen into that trap too, but I think if you can try to be a lot more honest, um, usually I find that shy people, are, shy people are a lot more honest and that's why they don't speak up as much is because that's, that's really what they want to use their words for is to say things that are truthful. Um, and that, that takes a lot of courage. And so I think if you are the kind of person who's very quiet, um, you, you might actually be getting your money's worth more um, if you're learning to speak here at St. John's. And also, don't try to sound intelligent, because if you do, everyone will know that you're not. <laughs> and if you have to act like you're intelligent, then I'm sorry, but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel attacked. Uh, you don't have, you are. <laughs> If you are unwilling to compromise with the, the social element, you're like, no, I'm not someone who wants to talk up because, okay, huge part of your grade here is how much your tutor likes you. <laughs> Don't let people yes. tell you otherwise. They do, there's no written assessments. There's no quizzes. Uh, well, there, there are in Greek. Greek is the only class. But the quizzes don't really matter for your grade that much, necessarily. Yeah, and you get Unless like, you do really well on it. Yeah, yeah if you get, do consistently very well, and you don't talk, and then the tutor's like, okay, um, they do the work, uh, but not the work that, I, you know, matters the most. And you're going to get your grades at the end of the year. And they say, it, they don't stress letter grades here, they have this alternative system called the Don Rag, which we'll, we'll get to in a moment, but that's all to say that if you are unwilling to compromise, like, uh, your, your social behavior, if you're too introverted, this might not be the school for you. But, well, I don't, I'm not too introverted. Yeah, there, there are people, funny. yeah. So. Yeah, it's funny because, like, I know, I know you stress a lot about not talking. If you have something to contribute, you have something to contribute. And so, yeah, I think, I think if you're really shy, but you know that you have something to say, I think that really makes the difference. If you're, if you're willing to believe that you have something to say, that's the thing that really makes a difference because if you're if you're not willing to believe in your words then no one else will <laughs> so, so you gotta start you gotta maybe um be, be willing to believe a little bit in yourself and also in other people you have to trust hmm. that they'll be able to expound upon your ideas and have a decent conversation like it's a, it's just a giant think tank really yeah i think um i i, I guess i painted in the bad light but for example, there's someone in my seminar class who has not spoken once the whole year. This is a course which grades most heavily on engagement, participation. This person has not spoken once. I do not think they will be returning um, in the coming years and that they're only here to, I guess, fulfill one year in college because their performance is bunk, non-existent. The, the tutors can tell if you are of the sort where you're just too shy and you're trying. I, I, I like to believe they can tell. I mean, they can tell when people are bashful, but in good faith. If you're just not willing to participate and you think that's stupid, do not come here. Hmm. Yeah. The tutors know, it's kind of scary. They're always watching, even though yeah. it might seem like they're not. And if you're a person who's easily hurt by criticism coming from people who know much more than you, about things that don't come here because literally reading every program author will make you feel if not dumb then you'll know your place in the world intellectually <laughs> yeah i think also it's a reach out for help i think is also a very important thing because very many people um try very very hard here at st john's but don't reach out for help and maybe that's part of the stigma against room johnny's is we know that they're fools for trying to do everything on their own. and Really, it's a school... I mean, otherwise, otherwise, I'm not sure you would even come to classes to learn things from other students, right? Yeah. In some way, it's very humbling. Like, you have mm-hmm. to admit that you don't really know anything. And you need your class and your peers to help you understand. Any other questions? Don rags. Don rags. So basically, you sit down at a table 
with all of your tutors from every class, well, except for music tutorial, because in freshman year we have freshman chorus, which does not sound good at all. <laughs> but um, they try. But anyway, so you sit down at a table with all of your freshman tutors, and they go around in a circle talking about you in third person, so like you're not actually there. So they're discussing you right in front of you, and you're allowed to take notes, but you're not allowed to say anything or respond. And I know some tutors give like the students an opportunity to respond at the very end. They give me about five seconds for the next person came in. Oh, oh wait, what? what? You guys are allowed to talk. Yeah. I was the last yes. one. Oh. I didn't have very long. Wow. Oh. I had like five minutes to like discuss with the tutors. I should have taken that opportunity. And my Don Rag, I got a little defensive. I was just saying, because... What I said, because there were actually a lot of criticisms that I was being too silly, which I think was fair. Um, but then I said, it, it seems to me as the what you're saying is that I'm not taking this seriously enough. Um, and that's, that's just how I'm responding emotionally. And so I got defensive, but I was honest about the mode in which I was being defensive. Not, I, I wasn't trying to say like the criticism was wrong yeah. so much as explaining how I was responding to it and noting that I don't think it was like a helpful way for me to respond to it so so that the criticism criticism could actually help me and so we had like a discussion about it and they said like oh yeah you you can be more prepared you can read more carefully before class um you do not want to come off as indignant there's mm. probably an archetypal role for the kind of student who pushes back uh you know to every tutor in his dawn rack and it's tough, it's like a little juggling act, you have to balance that with um, the tutors make observations over the course of several months, and there's little in the way of keeping record. Uh, I know what I mentioned earlier, which was a large part of the grade is if your tutors like you or not. Um, so it's, it's entirely possible that for your Don Rag assessment, it's so like just because the last two weeks prior to the dawn rag um, happen to have not been your best weeks and they don't reflect your average performance whatsoever academically, then uh, it kind of taints their image that they have of you. And you're allowed to disagree and I think a lot of it is the manner in which you disagree. If you try and find the reasons for what every tutor is saying about you, then you'll be able to kind of reveal, it's like, actually, I don't think this lines up. So. Yeah, that's also good to keep in mind your tutors are telepathic, so mm. they might get a wrong impression on you and you're allowed to say that to their daughter. Yeah, I think that's, that's really true because tutors, I don't know, it's funny because like they have a good idea of what you're like, but not always the best idea. They won't they won't really know what's going on, but they'll just have an idea like this is not helpful for the conversation. Right? Um so they'll 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 pay attention to you, but only only really how you're acting and not actually what what you're thinking, only if you say what you're thinking. Also take your tutors to coffee too mm. much. Yes. Yeah. Talk to them. Really helpful. Yeah. Remember, it is. <laughs> it's <laughs> oh part of it God. is how much oh. your tutors like you. <laughs> um, maybe I'm wrong about that. I hope I am. Don't be rude to them. Take them out to lunch. At the very least, if you don't want to think about it in terms of favoritism, think about it in terms of understanding one another, hmm. uh, and that will go a long way. Yeah, and like, I think. Like, that can sound kind of harsh, like, a part of your grade matters how much your tutors like you. But I think all people have something very likable about them. But I think it's about expressing it in a very clear way or expressing what your interests are in a very clear way. And usually, earnesty is generally pretty likable. Or if you're sarcastic but very funny. But really, I think if you mean to say something... um with an endeavor to say something truthful. I want to add on to that. Yeah. Um, earnest, I think it's like earnesty, uh, as well as you have to be able to say 
things that are interesting or you, you have to be able to talk about pretentious ideas without sounding like a jerk. <laughs> um, many people don't do that very well. But also don't put pressure on yourself that you need to say something interesting mm -hmm. because then you're just going to not say anything because you think it's not interesting enough. Yeah, and that's, that's the kind of funny thing is that very often some of the like slower students will make a very basic, ask a very basic question and at first they say it and you're like, oh, duh, like we can just answer that. Wait, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then the whole class is just stopped and you realize you've been on this like totally false train of thought that was missing something very foundational. And the student's like, did I do something wrong? What's going on? But actually they, huh. they've said something very interesting out of some kind of words that really weren't interesting at first, but within the context, it's a very interesting observation and so that's kind of the weird thing about it is you don't know if you're going to say something interesting until you've said it. So, so that's part of the other practice of St. John's is realizing that you, you don't actually know if something you're going to say is worthwhile, but it's kind of a game of lear learning. Yeah. Next question. I think that's pretty much it. I, I do have a, a last comment. All right. Um, there is... If you are concerned about genuine diversity of thought, in particular political thought, there is quite a bit here, just in very broad terms of left and right, it's probably like 60-40 respectively. If you're some kind of like weird political freak, communist or you're fascist... <laughs> Don't that, be a Nazi! <laughs> there is one communist and fascist per grade. There's yeah. always... Uh, yeah, That's... It's, yeah. it's a rule. Yeah, a lot of the, the, the communists and the fascists, they're buddies. Are they? Not always. With each other. <laughs> I don't know. At least in the, in the upper class. Okay. Uh, okay. You can get away with es espousing whatever your stupid ideas are as long as you do it uh, in a, a way that sounds like it's in good faith as well as you, you try and maintain some likability. If you are here expecting to find your tribe to fight Hmm. for ground against other tribes. Hmm. Um, I don't think that's in your self-interest. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but also do not think that if you are some kind of outcast, politically speaking, that you will not be comfortable. That's hmm. not true. People hmm. are always willing to listen to your ideas, even if they seem radical. Like, honestly, no matter how supposedly crazy your idea is, if you can present it in a logical and clear manner, people will want to hear what you have to say. That's, yeah, that's really true. Like, if you can, if the crazier your idea is, the more interesting it is, because um, people in my seminar who will just say, like, crazy, really crazy things, but then picking them all apart is actually very interesting. Like, this one guy fully just claimed in seminar, like, ignorance is bliss. And we stepped through it, and... I know who that is. <laughs> within, within the context of what he was saying... It did make sense. It was a logical conclusion. And so it was really interesting to then consider what kind of first assumptions he had, right? And that's the really interesting thing about um, conversations here is that you get to have a very clear and open conversation that makes the argument very, um, like, I don't know, self-aware even, which I, I think is very interesting because... Then, then your words take on a life of their own sometimes. Well, that's for today, I guess. And will we make another video? Senior year! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you guys in four years. We'll all right. look old and decrepit and have lung cancer by then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Bye! Bye! Bye. Uh, I would say bye, Greek. I never learned that. Yeah, we don't learn anything useful in Greek. No.